Hey, this is the Sneaky Dragon. Welcome to Wargroove. Alright, in this episode, we're gonna make some portals. That's right, we're gonna use the new gizmos and gadgets to make ourselves some hot, fresh portals. We're gonna be teleporting all over the map. It's gonna be great. Alright, the first thing you wanna do is click on this wrench-looking thing up here and go into Map Properties. Then we're gonna change the map type from Skirmish to Scenario. That's really important because the Scenario map Gives us access to this levery looking thing up here. That's where the gizmos live. Now we're going to click in the bottom right here. And we're going to get this archway looking thing. Those are going to be our portals. Awesome. Now they just look like empty arches, but they're gizmos. Gizmos have two states, on and off, true or false. We're going to turn them on, and they're going to have this swirly vortex in the middle. It's going to be awesome. And that's how you know that they're a portal. All right, now let's talk about the kind of portal we want to make. I'm thinking I want to start out with a really easy one-way portal. We're going to have this one light up and be active and send you to this gate over here. I want it to be intentional. You can only get sent through the portal on purpose if you end your unit's turn right there and then you get sent over here. That's going to be our first portal and then maybe we'll make a more complicated portal in a later video. But this is so that everyone can make at least a simple portal for their maps in the easiest possible way. All right, the first thing we need to make our portals work are locations. So I'm gonna click on this exclamation point in a box over here, then go into the bottom right, click, add, and I'm gonna add our very first location. This is going to be Gate 1. It's just what I named it. It can be anything you want. It's just a name to remember what this location is. Let's make this a red location. I'm going to click Close, and I'm going to place it right there. You can see this area is red. You can create these or remove them just like anything, but I just want one square right there of my Gate 1 location. That's really important because it will tell the game this is where my portal is, right there. All right, we need one more location, and we are going to call this gate two. And let's make it blue so we can tell the difference, and I'm gonna put it right there. Beautiful. All right, so we've got gate one, and we've got gate two. Now we need one more thing. I'm going to call this, well, this is just a special location that's gonna move around a lot, so let's call it special, and we'll make it black. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you put this. I'm just going to stick it way over there in the corner of the map, out of the way, so it doesn't hurt anybody. All right, cool. If you don't understand why we're doing this, don't worry. It'll become apparent later on. Just keep watching, and I'll try to explain everything as much as I can. The gate 1 location in red tells the game where our first portal is. The gate 2 location tells the game where our exit is. And this special location is going to be a part of a very clever thing we do later on. All right, let's play the map, just so you can see what it looks like. And as you can see, locations don't really appear in the map. I can't see any of those boxes. But the portals aren't active, and they don't do anything. So let's start adding some cool effects to our portals. I'm going to click on the wrench again and go into the event editor. And we're going to make a brand new event. I'm going to call this Make My portal look cool. What this is going to do is at the start of the match, it's going to activate that first portal by Mercia. So it just has to happen at the start of the match. So when start of match, and again, the name can be anything you want. For players, we're going to keep both players checked. That's fine. For conditions, I want it to happen automatically. So I'm not going to include any conditions. Actions. I'm going to hit new, and we want to turn the gizmo on, so we're going to do gizmo set state, gizmo set state, click OK. Now we have to pick the location, I'm going to scroll all the way down to gate 1, because gate 1 is the one I want to be active at the start of the game, and I'm going to set it to true. So set all gizmos at the location gate 1 to true. It's pretty good. Alright, we can close out of here and then play the map. All right, as you can see, now the gate is active. This portal is on and running. It's pretty great. 
but it still doesn't do anything. It just looks cool. And that's really all we were trying to do. Now, let's make it start teleporting units. We're going to go back into this wrenchy thing and back into the event editor. And this time, we're going to make an event that teleports a unit from one portal to another. All right, we're going to call this one, let's see, teleport. And I want it to happen over and over again. We don't want the teleporter to die after its first use, so we're going to set it on repeat. It's going to happen for both players, that's fine. Conditions, we'll talk about those later, they're really important, but let's skip that for now and go into actions. We're going to make a new action, and we want to teleport our unit, so we're going to click on unit teleport, okay. Any unit, that's fine. From the current player, let's keep it current player, that makes sense to me. But not just any location, no, only on gate 1. We want them to teleport from gate 1, from the first location, to gate 2, the second location. Uh, this checkbox can be on or off, it doesn't really matter. Alright, so any unit from the current player will go from gate 1 to gate 2. That all looks pretty good. Alright, let's play the map. And put Mercia on the gate. Awesome! She teleported! We have a warp gate! But wait, we're not done quite yet. There are a few bugs in this warp gate. For example, what if I have a soldier on the other side? What happens if I put Mercia on the warp gate? She tries to teleport, but it doesn't really work. And then, wh what if I move the soldier? She gets sucked in anyway. We wanted to make an intentional warp gate. You can only warp on purpose. So let's try to fix some of these bugs by adding conditions to the warp gate. All right, let's go into the event editor. We're going to click on our teleport event, our teleport trigger, and click edit. We want to go into conditions and start adding some conditions. All right, so I only want the teleport to happen if there's a unit on gate 1. Obviously, it doesn't make sense to teleport if there's nothing there, if there's nothing to teleport. Let's click on unit presence, current player, and there's exactly one unit on gate 1. Additionally, it doesn't make sense to teleport if there's a unit blocking the exit. So again, we're going to go into unit presence, and there's exactly zero units. I only want to teleport if there's exactly zero units from any player, not just the current player, any player, on gate two. That looks pretty good. So we're only going to teleport if the current player, and by the way, that doesn't mean it's currently your turn. It just means the player that we're talking about. So if the player that we're talking about has at least one of any unit on gate one, and any player has zero units on gate 2. Now, let's add another condition, because I really want current player to mean it's your turn. I only want this to happen on your turn. So we're going to set the current turn to the current player. It's an extra step you might not think about, but it's very important. This way, current player does mean current turn, because I set this right here, this condition. Okay. Let's review what we've done so far. The teleport will only happen for the current player's turn if they have exactly one unit on gate 1 and nobody has any units on gate 2. That's still pretty good. However, there's one more bug in our gate, and just so you can see it, I'm going to place lots of units on the map. Here's the bug. Let's say I have units covering both gates. As you can see, it's no longer trying to teleport. We fixed that. However, what happens if Valder kills this unit? Okay, we're good so far. But at the start of Mercia's turn, this unit immediately teleported. That's no good. I didn't choose to do that. It just happened. I only really want the unit to teleport if I go there and click wait. And look, it's like, or I kill this again. 
boom, mercy is turn, it happens. So we need to fix that. We want this to be an intentional warp gate. We only want you to teleport on purpose. So there's one more special thing we need to do. And this is a little crazy, but I'm gonna show you how it works. All right, so we are going to make a new event, a brand new event that's called only when I end my turn. And we're gonna have it happen repeatedly. And this is a special event that will apply to both players. And it will only happen on the condition that there's a unit has ended their turn. That's an important condition. All right, when a unit ends their turn, we're going to do something very special. We are going to use what's called location boolean operation. What this does is it lets you combine locations. So I am going to combine two locations into our special location that we made all the way over here. The reason we put it all the way over there is because we're going to change it. We're going to change it to a combination of the last unit used spot, basically where the last unit just ended its turn, and warp gate one. It is going to be an intersection of the two, meaning that this special location will only exist if the last unit to end their turn is exactly on warp gate one. Don't worry too much about it if that was too complicated. You just have to set it up exactly like this. But the idea is that the location special will only exist at the intersection at, at, at where you combine the spot where the last unit ended their turn and gate one. And if those two aren't the same place, it won't work. Special won't exist. So this special location only exists exactly when we want to teleport. It's super useful. All right, we don't need to set any other conditions. It'll always happen at the end of a unit's turn. That's pretty good. And it will happen on repeat. Okay, let's move that all the way to the top. We want that to happen first. Now let's go back into teleport and make a brand new condition. The condition is that there has to be a unit present from the current player exactly one unit on special. We really don't need this one anymore. Is the current player have exactly one unit on gate one? Because special is a combination of gate one. So we can go ahead and delete it. We just need to know that they exist on the special location. All right, let's try it out. First, we make sure that this does not try to teleport we're good. Now we move here. It's still not teleporting. That's correct. Valder's turn. Valder moves around. Moment of truth. It still didn't teleport. We can move it out of the way, no problem, and move a unit there, and it only teleports when we chose to end our turn on that space. Now let's have Valder kill this unit. Oh, I guess it really didn't matter because we didn't have a unit there. All right, hold on a sec. We teleport like normal and put a unit there. Moment of truth, moment of truth. Now let's have Valder kill this unit and end our turn. And if we did this correctly, we do not teleport. Nice, we didn't teleport. We can move things around and play the map like normal. Uh, sure, we can attack Valder. But we'll only teleport if we deliberately end our turn there. This is a solution to a problem that a few map makers have come to me and asked about. And this is how you get a purely optional warp gate. All right, I'm gonna show you how to make some more complicated warp gates or combinations of warp gates or maybe non-optional warp gates in future videos. But this should be enough to get every player started with just a few simple events and triggers to making your very first warp gate. That's all for now. This has been Sneaky Dragon, and welcome to Wargroove. Hey, if you've got any questions or if there's anything you didn't understand or a video you want me to make, let me know in the comments below.